Hello and welcome back to the Only Fools Love Horses YouTube channel. Yes, we've had a long hiatus from this place, but we're back. Uh, we've been doing our Saturday lives, a few lives in the week, covering the big races throughout the flat season. And now we're finally into the jumps, Harry. We're into the big stuff, over the fences, over the hurdles, all the bumpers. I bet you can't wait for it. Absolutely can't wait, Ash. And what fitting way to be filming on a week where the home of jump racing finally hosts some action back over the sticks. We're going back to Cheltenham at the weekend and I cannot wait. No, I drive past the place. It's like driving past uh, like a temple or the Holy Land every single day <laughs> on my way to university. Lee, uh, I don't think you're going to be joining us on, on Saturday at Cheltenham, but it's still going to be a brilliant couple of days action and, and just the jump season in general. Uh, there looks like some proper stars in the in the top of the top divisions. Yeah, looking forward to it, Ash. Um, look, everyone sees flat jumps, but we are mainly about the jumps. We love it. We love Cheltenham. Um, can't wait to get stuck in. GSI is what Willie Mullins would say. Get stuck in, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, get stuck in. We're so committed to this. Uh, jump season preview. I've just come back from an s &C session and physio, that's cut it short, to get down to uni and make sure we're here to record. Um, just a little a bit of housekeeping, this video is going to be covering horses just to follow in the season. Uh, it seems like it's a quite a, a quite a nice thing currently just to bash people that talk about Cheltenham in March. Obviously we've had the recent announcement of a four-day festival going forward, which is amazing. Uh, but we are going to be mentioning uh, our horses to follow and just a little little touch on Cheltenham just to see what races they could go for if the trainer decides to take them there, what price they are currently for the races. So it gives us a little bit of a marker to sort of watch ourselves throughout the season, gentlemen. Um, we're going to be covering three horses in this video each. So three from myself, three from Lee and three from Harry, all from the different divisions. Hopefully no bumper horses or you're going to get kicked off the Zoom call. Um, without further ado, gents, I think we should get stuck into this. So this is the only fools love horses, horses to follow for the jump season 2022-2023. Harry, I'm going to chuck him in the deep end. Harry, you can open this up for the season. What is your first horse to follow this coming jump season? Uh, first horse I'm looking forward to actually ran at the festival in the champion bumper. And this horse was the best of the British, obviously, behind Fasal Vega, the horse. Funnily enough, I have a tattoo of. Um, now I'm not... Harry, I don't think, don't think you mentioned it enough. Oh, it was just the 2-0 to 1, the uh, big <laughs> 20 to 1, uh, and it went off 15 to 8 favourites. So there's plenty of value. You hear that word in this show, um, either in this show or the coming weeks. But no, listen, the horse that I'm going to mention is a horse of Gary Moore's called Authorised Speed. Now, fifth in the champion bumper at 50 to 1 was a one of the rank outsiders and really, really impressed me in the way the horse absolutely travelled through the race. And yes, you could, the racing post says ridden and weakened gradually, but... These are proper grade, grade one horses in front of him. You've got American Mike, who no doubt is going to be a proper grade one horse over hurdles. Fasal Vega, I can't wait to see what that horse is going to be doing over the sticks, but whether that horse is going to be any price at all. Even come the Supreme, I think he's already five to two or something silly like that for the uh, Supreme already, and we're only in October. So now this horse, Authorised Speed, his sire Authorised has saddled 161 hurdlers to date and 60% of them have won at some point in their career. And Authorised, authorized his, his offspring has been some serious, nice hurdlers, especially in their first year as well. I'm going to give you a few names. We've got the likes of Nichols Canyon, grade one winner in, over in Ireland. We've also got Echoes in Rain, another grade, grade one winner over in Ireland. And a horse that was a grade one, well, should have won, the uh, it should have won the triumph for Gary Moore and team is Goshen. Now, obviously, Goshen was by authorized. And um, listen, I could say all day my horse to follow is Goshen, but he's going over fences this year. Fair play to anyone who sits on that horse because I just think he's an absolute live wire, even though I love him to bits. But I think authorized speed, there's lots of improvement to come. Um, from this fella. He won really nicely at Newbury that day. I, I sure remember you were there that day and he won by 10 lengths. Um, yeah. Really, really smart performance, I thought. So I think there's going to be a lot of uh, fun to, have, to be had with this horse. And uh, Gary Moore gets a, a really nice tune out of his novice hurdlers. And he, he started the season in really nice form. So Authorised Speed is my first one to follow. 
Yeah, you mentioned the champion bumper there. That was obviously run on bottomless conditions. He can only, you know, finishing the best of the British there, it can only be a positive to look at, Harry. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it just shows this this horse can be very versatile. Obviously, he won at Newbury on good to soft and then ran really well and only beaten 11 lengths by Fasal Vega, who ran away with the win. Um, on that, and that was heavy ground. That was seriously testing ground. It's almost as testing as when they say it's good to soft at, at sundown, and really it means heavy. So it's uh, no, this this horse is very ground versatile, and I think could be a really nice prospect this year. Good man, thank you very much, Harry Lee. Throw the floor over to you. We've had a lovely shout there. For Harry's first horse, your first horse to follow for the upcoming jump season. Well, Harry's already started with one from the bumper. I think it'll be a really strong bumper uh, form going into this season from last season. Um, and mine is American Mike. So Gordon Elliott trained uh, for Beckdiff Stud. Um, like Harry says, that that's good form behind Fasel Vega. My lad was only beaten um, just over three lengths. Um, beat the the likes of Harry's horse, uh, Authorised Speed. Um, James's Gate was in there. Seabank Bistro. Um, there were some solid horses who I think will come out and do the form well um, this season. Um, I think Gordon Elliott's just mentioned, and I'm going to read a quote out actually of his. So he says, um, I'm convinced he's a very good horse. I haven't lost faith. I'd say two male, four furlongs is his optimum trip. Um, he had a dirty scope after punch us down, so we put a lane through that. We know he's far better than that. Uh, we think the world of him, he's quality. So I think that says it all. Um, I think he will start. Maybe he's at Down Royal. Gordon Elliott likes to target that meeting. Um, he started there last season over two, mile one in national and flat. One by seven length, he's down. Um, that was on soft. Come out one by 17 length uh, the next day in a listed race. The form wasn't great, but in behind uh, the, the horse that finished second, she went on and ran second in a listed race at Leopardstown in the mayor's listed race. So it wasn't too bad form. Obviously, then they went to Cheltenham um, second. Not not to be disappointed by running against the mighty Fasel Vega, who come this season, obviously, hopefully will show the, the the proper potential that uh, that horse has and it'll prove the form right. Um, Gordon Elliott said it was dirty scope when it went to punch us down, was beaten a long way, um, but it was, was miles clear over the fourth and I just think it can go on to run some really good races and be top class. I think it will come out at maybe down Royal area and that's normally end of October, start of November, mm-hmm. kick on mm-hmm. to Christmas and I think it should take in the Dublin Racing Festival. Missed out last season. Um, went there fresh horse to Cheltenham, but hopefully can take that extra run and then kick on from there and go to the Ballymore. Um, six to one for the Ballymore. So that's maybe its uh, end of season target, the Ballymore. But I just think Fasel Vega will go the Supreme Route. You've got the likes of James Gate, who's in the um, Ballymore ownership uh, colours. And he may be the one for the two male four form the Willie Mullins team. So um, yeah, I just think everything links in, and American Mike will be the one over two male four. Maybe he's ending up in the Ballymore. Brilliant yeah, just a quick, just a quick, just a quick one, Lee. Um, I thought American Mike. I mean, I, I remember myself and Ash. Obviously, we were at um, the last run that American Mike was seen in public, and we said straight away that this horse was as soon as going around the bend. I thought the horse was struggling. Um, do you think the horse will be campaigned differently this year? Maybe uh, likely raced a little bit more. And I mean, just remember, he went fresh into Cheltenham yeah. last year, and he ran his heart out. That horse, I mean, it was on Bottenham's ground, as we've already said. That could have taken it out of um, American Mike. Uh, I hope it hasn't. It might be a little bit ground dependent. What do you think? Uh, maybe it's the, the 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 spring ground might help him. Uh, you know, come March area, but. Um, I actually think it maybe he's needed that extra run. I, I, I think it should have ran at the Dublin Racing Festival. It went to Navin, run by 17 length, and it, it, it didn't really beat much, but I just think um, hopefully it can kick on this season. And, yeah, I think the two-mile four around Cheltenham um, 
it is, is it'll be perfect for him. Yeah, no, I think he'll have an absolute belter in the bumper and obviously we can put a line through uh, his run at Punchestown. But I thought a, a horse that finished ahead of him, Redemption Day, also did very well that day. Uh, but you yeah. can easily see this guy going off shorter if, if it's uh, it's definitely the maiden hurdle at Down Royal um, or however you say it. Irish people, please don't murder me in the comments for saying Down Royal. Just to say, though, that the, um, Redemption Day was actually beaten 65 length in the champion bumper behind Fasal Vega in America. I put a line like, through that, yeah. Yes, so you have to forgive a horse at least one run, 100%. and that's what you had to do for punches down, dirty scope, scrap it in, in this season, it'll be a different horse. Think about the flat season we just had. Uh, it's final comments on the flat season, that Bay Bridge. You know, I know it was behind by Eden, it's 10 to 1, that should be in the price, but... People wrote it off after the eclipse, even though they put in a yeah, great, yeah. One, great one performance. I can completely see that. American Mike, you can completely see him going off short than six to one. Come the Champion Festival if he goes there. In my selection, first horse I'm going to be putting up, uh, Shock Horror, is a handicapper. Now I'm going to be putting up a handicap chaser. I put up a few horses last season, I put up about five. Uh, impulsive one, Phil's Do Dairy, uh, Echoes and Rain, they were the main three that did well for me. Um, but I'm going for a handicap chaser called Ramillies. Uh, ran in the Albert Bartlett now, um, began his season in the main hurdle at Nace um, relatively late on the season, January 30th, uh, where he finished 12 lengths behind the nice guy, a subsequent grade one, double grade one winner at Cheltenham and Punchestown. Uh, fast forward to the business end of the season, um, and he's, um, he's finishing behind the nice guy, travelled like an absolute train uh, through the Albert Bartlett, but just didn't kick on at the right time. Um, I've spoken to Brian Cooper uh, a couple of times now, um, and he likes his horse. He likes him on the day of the Albert Bartlett, um, just things can go right for him that day. Uh, I know Mullins uh, has a has a little sweet spot for him. I've spoken to him a couple of times. I think he could be really nice. Um, obviously, you've got the different uh, codes in Ireland and, uh, and Great Britain, where in Great Britain, if you get handicap mark and hurdles, that is your handicap mark going into chases, but in Ireland, you get a fresh mark, beginners chases, uh, and see where you go from there. He's currently rated 136 over hurdles. I'd imagine uh, that'd be the mark he'd get after a couple of beginners chases uh, in Ireland. That'd be roughly what he'd be going for. Um, and if he gets that mark, anywhere near that mark, he'd be going well at some of the big handicap chases throughout the season. Now, where, where it'll end up, I'm not too sure. It's Willie Mullins. You could put a dartboard with nine different races and you still find the 11th race there. Um, Kim Muir, potentially, um, on the new course around Cheltenham, I think could suit him better. Again, he travelled really well into that race at Cheltenham uh, in the Albert Bartlett and just didn't see it out for whatever reason that was. I don't think that was his true running there, and I think he could be a lot better than that. Um, but I do think he's a stayer more than a dropping down in trip. Obviously, run at three miles. People are saying he could go to two and a half. I think he's more of a stayer. I think the extra couple of furlongs in the Kim Muir could suit him better. Uh, he's currently not priced up, but I think I asked a firm the other day and they gave me 33 to 1 for him, um, for Ramillies. So we'll see how the season goes out for him. Is it's that, a, it's a, go on. Is that for, is that for any race, uh, 33s? No, I think I asked, I, do you know, I saw a firm, and it's not for the Kim Muir now, I, I saw a firm price at the Ultimate at the start of the season. And this is when I forgot that Kim Muir even existed. And um, the Ultimate, I think it was 40 to 1. So I'd be looking around that mark for something like the Ultima or the Kim Muir. Now, please don't come for me in the comments for uh, going for a handicapper for the Children Festival already. Uh, but it's more of a handicapper to follow. I think Romilly's could be picking up one of these big handicap chases, whether that be uh, Dublin Racing Festival, Cheltenham Festival. Even if he makes a trip over to Aintree or saves himself to for Punchers Town, I think there could be a nice race in there for him. Um, I think if you, um, if you see him in a Dex over in England... Uh, mm. In the UK, sorry for for a handicap, you'll know they're potentially targeting these handicaps. Uh, Gordon Elliott likes to do it, so he'll put the decks in and then he'll re withdraw the horse. Take him out, just yeah. to check his mark. So, yeah, I love it when the Irish do that. It's beautiful. They've got about nineteen yeah. entered for Cheltenham on the weekend, and none of them will turn up. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Ramillies for me uh, is a handicapper to watch for this season. Over the fences, fingers crossed, you can pick up one of these big staying races. A circle back to Lee. Uh, would you give us your second horse to follow for this season? Mine is Vosalie. 
Um, Beautiful. Beautiful. I, I did write a piece uh, the other day. We, we, we managed to do one with Peter at Risk for Rewards on uh, Twitter there. So um, he does a good piece. And I, I did mention Vosely for David Christie. He runs in the colours of wing leader, who was second last year in the Hunters chase. Uh, that's obviously going to be his target this season. I think he needs better ground. The, the couple of runs um, at the start of his career on soft, he didn't do so well. Was well beaten a few races on soft. Then just sprung to life last season on good ground. Bill away there is obviously it tops the market. Goes there with a good chance. There's been multiple dual winners of the race. Pasha de Polda, Salsify uh, on the fringe. All them have went in won the race multiple times. Stats, both. Love, that. love that knowledge. Yeah, got to get a stat in, haven't we? But um, just for me, I think Billowy this season won't be as good. It was stamina that won the day, the last day. Come from miles back, obviously, everyone remembers the race. Just beat on the uh, the lane, poor wing leader in the same colours. But I just think Vosalea is the one with potential this season. Seven-year-old turning eight, went to punches down, sorry, just beat by Billaway, absolutely clattered the last, come to join him. Um, should have won the race, I would have said. <laughs> There's plenty of people in the same camp, but it was just, just touched off after making a howler at the last. Went to Stratford and won the race again. Absolutely hosed up again. So I just think it could have claimed the scalp of Bill away. I just think that this season it'll definitely be the one who has the most potential in that in that sphere. Love that from you, Lee. It's a horse I really like. And I was gutted when he didn't win at Punchestown at the end of last season. <laughs> Second horse, please. What was your fancy? Well, my second one is a he's a festival winner last year, and oh, I tipped this horse up at twenty five to one last year, and he duly obliged and won by six and a half lengths. It is the one and only the eleven year old Cool Cody. Now, what a servant he's been, as not he, Ash? Um, he's an absolute legend of the game. He's eleven years old now. He's getting on. But, I mean, Evan Williams does such a good job with this horse. And if, if you just look at his, his his recent races through last year, he didn't have one race away from Cheltenham. Now, that is just outrageous. And uh, I love that horse. And bear in mind, he, he won the plate by six and a half lengths. He won at, he won at the December meeting by two lengths. And he, the time that he tipped up before that, I remember Adam, Adam Wedge came out and said he had so much horse left under the bonnet. And he duly obliged at 12 to 1 next time out and won. Being a good friend of yours, Ash Zamza. Now, we won't mention that horse because I know you might cry a little bit. But um, no, I think Cool Cody. Now, what they can listen, we're probably going to see Cool Cody back out at the weekend. And you're probably not going to be ex- excited with what you see because I'd imagine this horse will be running for a handicap mark for later on in, to pick up another big pot at the at Cheltenham. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this horse back around the 145 mark come March time, but you can expect he'll give his all. And just if you just watched the plate back last year, he got headed um, He got headed four, uh, four out, I think, or it might have been three out. And he, he duly came back around the outside and absolutely fairly bolted in. And I remember standing with Lee on the stands. Uh, we were in the best main enclosure at the time. And I was just thinking, as soon as this horse got to the front two out, I was thinking, there's no way this horse is going to get beat now. Like this, if Adam Wedge has any sense about him, and he duly does because he is a cracking rider, he'll just kick this horse on and just go absolutely barney for the fence. And he duly obliged and bolted home. Was so, he, no. Was he top weird in that race? I can't remember. Top weight yeah. was. I think it was the second horse. Line I think, of 11.5. So, it's oh, only three pounds off top weight. It's just because of that type of race, you normally need. A well handicapped horse. It just shows how much class he's got to be carrying them um, big weights. Keep going to Cheltenham and, and keep coming back as well. Yeah, well, I mean the second. I think the second and third. I mean, we've seen the third in that day. Uh, Spirit of the games. That horse ran. Um, I believe it was a couple of days ago at Fakenham. Yeah. Um, was only beating a neck, and that horse. You know, that horse just loves Cheltenham. But just never wins at Cheltenham. So if you fancy a little place play, that I mean, the Spirit of the games is always going to be there for you. Um, I think the second is a nice horse, Imperial Alcazar. But I think Cool Cody, is a, there's another big pot in this horse this year. And uh, it's just about finding the right day. And it's usually when he's not favourite, he's usually at a big price. So Cool Cody, Ash is my second selection. Cool Cody, it's a horse that's run 14 times around Cheltenham in his career. Uh, he went to every single meeting last year. October, November, December, I love that. January, I love that. January again. Yeah. 
uh, festival and the April meeting. Absolute legend of a horse. My second selection. Uh, now, with the nature of what we're doing for this video, uh, I had two horses trained by Gordon Elliott. Both of them, I think, go for the same division and uh, distance and owned by the same owners in Cadwell Construction Limited, and that is Mighty Potter and Phil Dore. And the way that we do this video, uh, if it was doing a Cheltenham Festival and to post, I give you Mighty Potter, but a horse I think is going to be an absolute tank in the first part of the season, and he'll go on into the second part of the season and do well, is Phil Dore, and that's going to be my selection going into the novice chasing division. Um, as I said, I had an awful amount of trouble uh, picking out a horse. I could have given you a really strong selection for Mighty Potter, uh, but it is Phil Dore. Obviously ran in the Triumph, finished second to Vauban. Uh, was also running with Pied Piper in that race. Now I'm convinced, I am convinced in that race, if Davier kicked off the turn, uh, he would have given Vorset, uh, Vauban a much better race. He wouldn't have won, or he may not have won, but uh, Vauban maybe was flattered for the result. Uh, with uh, Phil Dore not kicking off the bends. Um, when you're younger than Mighty Potter, uh, this Dr. Dino Gelding uh, was milling around the juvenile uh, hurdle division last year, running into Vauban countless times, um, and he goes chasing this season. I think he's going to be perfect for the two-mile four uh, chasing division this year. He'll he'll end up in some grade three, grade two novice chase uh, over in Ireland uh, before Christmas. Fairly sure it's in some of those races that Gornet has been using already. Um, the, through last season and he could end up going on to the two mile four novice chase at the channel festival the turners um he's a nice price now i think he's 25s around 33s for the turners uh, i think phil Dore is going to be absolutely loving this at cheltenham he jumped the penultimate hurdle in the lead uh, just lost his lead can run the bend and stayed on really well so i think that's why the two mile four is going to be absolutely up the street um and to keep it short and sweet phil Dore, turners or wherever he goes two mile four He's going to be lovely for Gordon Elliott this season. That's going to be my second horse to follow. <music> Harry, come back to you. Final horse, seven minutes remaining. What are we looking at? I'll fire mine quickly over Ash for you. And it's a horse that one of you talks the first time out. And I was lucky enough to speak to John Joe O'Neill Jr. Um, straight after the race. And listen, he absolutely loved this horse. Are you wise to that um, is the horse in question. Now, this horse has got an outstanding pedigree uh, behind him. He's got a, certainly an engine. He does need to brush up his jumping. That's absolutely fine for a first-time hurdler. Um, you'd like to see a nice engine go behind uh, the, the horse and win really nicely and he did five and a half lengths yes the whole, the race cut up with two of the main principles uh, but you can't you can't argue with it uh, five and a half length uh, success on debut he won his um, bumper start by uh, two lengths as I should say with the, there was loads of distance behind the third and the fourth so um, this horse's mum Pretty Puttons is an unraced half sister to the one and only Denman now that is an engine for sure to follow um i banged on about this horse for quite a long time now but when i spoke to john joe on the track uh he certainly had a smile about his smile on his face so and he said this is definitely one to follow but after a few schooling sessions the the wise knowledge of uh, mr john joe neil senior i can imagine this horse will be quite a nice prospect and john joe's been looking for that 150 horse especially this year as well they've got some nice prospects coming out so he's definitely one to follow are you wise to that very much harry lee final horse to follow in this part one episode of horses to follow i'm, I'm sticking in with a tried and trusted epiton um mm -hmm. i know i know harry will be uh this point i'm putting here because uh one of his favorite horses but look i just think now's the time to try the mare's hurdle you've seen the backside of honeysuckle um you've got constitution hill who will go champion hurdle route now's the time nicky cash in where you can go to the mayor's hurdle um i just think epiton will have a different route this season and hopefully go for the mayors at cheltenham and then on to the in hurdle again which she absolutely relished and bolted up last season so epiton for me Lee. Final horse for me to keep a little watchful eye on is an Emmett Mullins juvenile hurdler. 
Uh, it's called, uh, now let me get this right, McTeague. Um, was formerly with Jim Bolger on the flat. Uh, um, now with Emmett Mullins, a uh, large four-year-old out of Fracas, who has produced 15 winners from 29 runners over the jumps. Um, he absolutely sluiced in uh, on his hurdle debut at Sedgefield in the Maiden, one by eight and a half lengths, doing handstands. Absolutely lovely. That was on good ground. Went over to France for a grade two uh, at Autoy. Um, won again there, won by three quarters of a length. Um, he's rated 98 on the flat and he beat a horse equivalent to the rating of 146 over in France. And you think Emmett Mullins, you think potential horse to go forward in the juvenile hurdling division. You think Boodles, something like that. A nice juvenile handicap hurdle. Because he's done that, because he's 98 rated on the flat and because he's beaten a 146 rated horse, uh, it's triumph all over for me. Uh, if he ends up going here or he ends up going for a juvenile hurdle in Ireland, I have to give a shout out to Adam on Twitter, uh, GG Banker on Twitter. Um, go give him a follow if you don't already. Uh, he's put it up on Twitter. It's 25 to 1 with Bet365. Because he's done that, it's now 18 to 1. You can get 20s in places for the triumph if you fancy a little anti-post bet. Um, but yeah, it's McTeague for me. Um, could go a little bit under the radar for the Triumph division, hopefully at the moment. Fingers crossed, he can end up in the Triumph and have a nice run in the juvenile division. And that is all of our three horses to follow for the first episode. Hopefully we'll do a couple more. Uh, we've got plenty more content to come out. I've got a write-up on these horses that I'll post very soon. Uh, we've got Saturday Lives to go through. We've got Cheltenham coming up. We've got the November meeting in a few weeks. I can't wait, Harry. I can't wait, Lee. It's going to be absolutely belting, surely. Yeah, I can't wait. Absolutely can't wait. Just get me home. Get me home. <laughs> Don't forget to um, follow and subscribe. Uh, so we've obviously got the YouTube channel, so make sure all uh, everyone can subscribe and uh, obviously follow the Saturday Lives. Yes, follow the Saturday Lives. Do follow us on Twitter at A Simmons Journal, at Racing Lee One, and at Harry Beard Seven. Uh, drop us a follow on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, comment if you liked it, and comment if you don't. I'll probably ignore those ones though. Give it a like if you do enjoy, it, and uh, thank you very much for watching for our first episode of the Anti Post uh, Cheltenham National Hunt Horses to Follow. Uh, if you did enjoy, please subscribe. Thank you very much, and have thank a good you. weekend. <laughs>